What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the recap, man. It's so crazy how this NBA season is going. I feel like it is the most unpredictable season of all time. There's a lot of parody. There is no heavy favorite like we've seen in the past couple years. And because of that, the narrative around teams can switch just like that. It feels like just a couple days ago we were talking about how the Houston Rockets had the second best defense in the league after the James Harden trade. And now they got double-digit losses in a row. It was just yesterday we were talking about the Miami Heat struggling. And now they are back on their grind. So, you know, I do these recaps, and, and part of it is overreactions to an extent. But we all know that the, the, the landscape of the NBA can change very, and I mean very, very quickly. I want to start off by talking about the Miami Heat because they are back, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you are new. Let's talk about Heat basketball because this one was a very important game for them. Um, they're going against the Utah Jazz, who's the best team in the league right now, record-wise, and one of the hottest teams in the league. It seems like nobody can stop them. They are a legendary three-point shooting team, all of those things and the Miami Heat outplayed them. This was probably the best Miami Heat game I've personally watched this season. I don't know. I can't really say that it's the best game of the season for them, but for me as a viewer, this was definitely um, their best game. They got production from pretty much everybody, and and when they were struggling, I think a lot of us kind of forgot, at least if you are in Heat Nation, you may have forgot that Gordon Drogic existed, right? Because Gordon Drogic missed a lot of time, and he was basically on his second game back, and, and when they went on that run in the bubble, uh, people were, were really questioning the reliability of what Goran Dragic had did. And, you know, I had come on here like, y'all forget that Goran Dragic was just an all-star two years ago. So, yeah, eventually you'll probably see him decline because he is an older point guard, but he still got a lot left in the tank. And today he showcased a lot, a lot of great things. And they really took advantage of the defense that the Utah Jazz were running. Now, I don't really know if this is something Utah Jazz normally do, and I just overlooked it because they've been so dominant on the offensive side of the ball. I haven't really paid attention to, to how, how their defensive strategy is, but they were like driving dropping very far back on like the pick and rolls. They were dropping very far back and leaving a lot of shooters. And well, the Miami Heat have shooters. You know what I'm saying? Duncan Robinson slowly shooting out of his slump, which is great to see. Goran Dragic's productivity. Iguodala sitting threes. But the big thing, of course, is Jimmy Butler. You know, if Jimmy Butler had played more games, he is, he is a guaranteed lock in the All-Star game. All-Star started when he's putting up performances like this where he can dominate a game without hitting a jump shot. Bam Adebayo's defense is very good um, tonight. And the crazy thing is, it's not like the Utah Jazz played bad. Like, the Utah Jazz had a very good game as well. The Miami Heat just played better. Now, Heat fans, this is where things are looking up for y'all because let me look at the standings really, really quick. Right now, they're sitting at the 5 seed at 16 and 17, and the Bulls were just the 6 seed, and now we're down to the 10 seed because we lost today. That's, that's how the standings are working today. And that I'm telling you, this season is just so, so very weird. Um, but they are sitting at the 5 seed on their 5-game win streak. Let me read y'all their schedule coming up. You have the Atlanta Hawks twice, who you can argue is the most disappointed team in the league, especially after another loss today. You have the Pelicans, the Magic, the Bulls, the Magic, the Cavaliers, the Grizzlies, then the Pacers, and then things get a little bit more difficult. But the next five or six games, and nothing is a cakewalk in the NBA, but the next five or six games can be locks of wins for y'all. So you could potentially go on a double-digit game win streak, but again, you got you to gotta go through the Bulls. And right now, if you erase tonight's game off the agenda the Bulls have been rolling um, but you have a lot of games coming up that are very very winnable so that that slow start is really turning around for you guys and and it's exciting to watch definitely exciting to watch the next game I did get to tune into was Kings versus the Pistons now I've been wanting to talk about this for the last couple, I guess, week or so, but the Kings were playing so bad, it was hard for me to justify talking about them to, an, to a great length. And, you know, I'm still not going to talk about them to a great length, but one of my favorite things about this season when it comes to player progression is De'Aaron Fox's three-point shooting ability. Now, tonight, he was ice cold from the three-point range, but overall in the season, he has slowly turned himself into a respectable jump shooter. And not even just like on a catch-and-shoot, I got three seconds to get the shot up. In the floor of the offense, this man is hitting step-backs and things like that. That, which is which is great, which is great for the development of De'Aaron Fox. Today's game was very weird, and I don't really know why I stuck around to watch this completely. Uh, maybe it, be, it was because De'Aaron Fox, but they got like no productivity from their bench, and they ended up getting a win. And the last minute or two of this game felt like an eternity, you know, reviews, things like that. Buddy Hill with the temp lay-in dunk. Was it over the back foul? Was it not? Dennis Smith Jr. had a very good game, you know, in his very young Detroit Pistons career. But I just want to highlight uh, De'Aaron Fox's three-point shooting ability had. Have, it has got better. Let's talk about the Bulls. 
Last time I was telling y'all that the Bulls have given me hope, and it was the worst kind of thing to get hope from the Chicago Bulls. And through the first three quarters, I was like, oh, my God, the Bulls might actually be a good team. Now, I'm not stirring too far away from that, but we we, we, just, we got blown out in that fourth quarter. The fourth quarter was crazy, and it was, it was cool to see because the Suns are one of my favorite teams to watch for obvious reasons when you consider me being a big Chris Paul fan. But when you see him doing the things that he do against your favorite team, it hurts. It actually hurts. And this is a this is the same Chris Paul that led a team on a comeback against us last year. Do y'all remember that Bulls fans? Chris Paul, Shea Gilles Alexander and them came back on the Bulls in a 20 point game and they came back and it's, he did it again. He just hates us. He just hates us. Anyway, um, very good game for them. That fourth quarter was dominated by Chris Paul being the point god, really, really taking advantage of of the thing that he does best, and that is just like being able to control a game. And then lastly, De- um, DeAndre Ayton in that fourth quarter would look like an all-star. He looked like the best player on the court for a lot of this fourth quarter. And that's that's one of the biggest things about the Chicago Bulls because Wendell Carter is a very, very good defender. Do not get me wrong. But when it comes to like one-on-one positional defense against another good big, that is where he struggled. As a team defender, we cannot get much better than Wendell Carter. The numbers will back me up on this. Wendell Carter makes our defense very, very good in comparison to when he's off the floor. But it's when he's going against these big men that actually actually have a really good offensive game or overall he may struggle because I think a lot of it has to do with his size I mean he's he's matching up against a seven foot dude and it's like six nine you know what I'm saying so DeAndre Aiden took advantage of that um and it, and it was cool um Devin Booker came out guns blazing hot and then he slowed down and the Bulls blew a game yeah 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 the thing that the Bulls are missing most is a Chris Paul light because it's only one Chris Paul but a guy that can really control the pace and, and be able to settle things down when you when you need it and we don't have that on this roster. And in due time, though, I'm not saying this season particularly, but I'm sure the people at the top offices are realizing the things that we need because I think every Bulls fan really realizes this, that like as a we need a player that could just be like, we good, Zach. Don't worry, let's let's chew a little bit of clock, you know, do those type of things. Um, the next game that we got to tune into was the Thunder game. I'm not saying it was the Hawks game because the Hawks disappointed me once again, but the Thunder game because I, I somebody said on Twitter, you should tune in to uh, to to, to Teo Maladon. I want to call him Theo, but I think it's Teo Maladon. And I was like, all right, bet I'll I'll tune in. And Teo was going off. And like like this is this team is so weirdly constructed. It doesn't make sense for them to be as as solid as they are. Who would have thought that this OKC team would have the same record as the Atlanta Hawks? That tells you expectations are really weird because this is an amazing season for the for the uh for OKC but also a huge disappointment for Atlanta but like Teo Maladon very very good I didn't know much about him coming into this season and I think in the very early of his career maybe the first month or so he, he definitely struggled George Hill goes out with an injury Teo Maladon comes to the start of the lineup and he has been dramatic and I was listening to the broadcast this was Ty Jerome's very first game a part of the team he looked great and it's so crazy that this man Lou, get, Lou Dort I almost tried to pronounce his full name but I can't do it Dort be putting players in Alcatraz, and I feel like he's never really in foul trouble. Trey Young was locked. Trey Young didn't attempt the free throw. Did he attempt the single free throw on Alcatraz? On absolute Alcatraz. So I really want to talk about the Atlanta Hawks because again, they're disappointing me. Next game we should talk about. Oh, I was really trying to contemplate if I wanted to start the episode with this player and this team specifically, but let's get into it talking about Draymond Green. Oh, yeah. If you remember. Draymond Green cost this team a game the last time they went against this Charlotte Hornets team. Terry Rozier called game after Draymond gets ejected, after a loose ball, yada, yada, yada. Draymond took it personal. Literally took it personal. This man is electric in the the most non-traditional sense because he's not very athletic. He is not speedy. He is not electric by the normal definition. But as an NBA nerd, watching the things that Draymond Green can do on the floor is mind-boggling. A lot of a lot of his assists, and it, it did happen this this uh, game as well. But early in the season, a lot of the way they were running their offense was like, "Hey, here's a dribble handoff between me and Steph Curry. We're gonna do this a hundred times a game." The offense is way more free flowing than that. I think that Kelly Oubre had like seven dunks in the first quarter. I'm not even exaggerating. He had like seven dunks in the first quarter. 
Draymond Green's playmaking and his defensive ability is amazing. And I, I feel like Draymond's career is going to be like, when it's all said and done, people are going to look back on it and be like, man, he wouldn't be the same if he wasn't playing with Steph, if he wasn't playing with Clay his entire career. And that might be true, but it's taken away from all of the talent that really is Draymond Green. There are not many people that can play that Draymond Green role. Yes, it is elevated when you're playing with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, for sure. But the things that Draymond Green does as far as his playmaking, his defense, his intensity, his coaching can go across all of the other 29 teams. It just so happens he's playing with Steph Curry, so it looks a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? But this is another one of those games. Very, very ugly. Took a long time to get it done. That fourth quarter was disgusting. If you erase the fourth quarter, I'll probably come into this episode talking about Draymond Green and the Warriors to start the show. But the fourth quarter was so very ugly. Malik Monk continues to get those minutes and opportunity and taking advantage of it, which is great for them. Um, LaMelo Ball, another good game. And I felt like Miles Bridges was trying to do another Trace McGrady impersonation late in this game after a missed free throw. But it, it didn't really work out, man. The, this Warriors team is, is so crazy to, to look at where they are now and compare it to the first two to three weeks of the season. And that's why I try to talk about overreactions because I, I am somewhat guilty of it as well. I, I knew that them being as bad as they were wasn't going to sustain itself, but I didn't think they were going to turn into this good this fast. Like right now, they are they are good. And they have a couple blown games like the Draymond Green one and a couple more like that. But they are good. Like the other night, they had a game where Steph Curry shot like one for 10 from three. And they were cool. They won a game. Kelly Oubre turned from the worst player in the league through the first two weeks of the season to being very, very good again. Very, very good again. Wiggins, we always talk about Wiggins as far as his defense and his progression of his defense. I don't know how, how true that was, but it's still good. It's still good, and that's what you can ask for. And now that they got their centers back, it's more synergy. I love watching this team play, and, and something happens. James Wiseman turns the ball over, misses the rotation, and Draymond Green gets into his ear. That's what I would want if I was a player, a young player. And Draymond, bro, if you if you somehow come across these videos, I'm, I'm going to always leave, leave the invitation out to talk about hoops on called game, bro. You'd be the perfect guest because when it comes to comes to called game and the visual idea I have behind this, a lot of it is trying to learn from the best of the best because even as a basketball fan, I can only see it through my eyes, my own lens as a fan. I will never understand some of the stuff Draymond Green knows, and I want to I wanna try to understand those things. And I'm sure people at home watching would love to understand those things. Um, another game that I watched, and it was actually the first game of the day, so I probably should have started with it, um, was the Pacers versus the Celtics. The Celtics did a win after Cardiac Kemba looks like him again. And for the most part, the last five, six, seven, eight games, he's been really solid. He had that one stinker on national TV a few days ago, and that's when everybody was talking. But for the most part, these last couple games have been been solid. The only problem with the Celtics as of right now, they can't get their three stars to all perform very well together. Daniel Tice, Clutch Daggers, um, Robert Williams, Time Lord, putting in quality, quality minutes. They got a Jeff Teague performance too, um, but it was still close because Jason Tatum shot like one for nine or something like that. And then when it comes to the Pacers, bro, their, their late game offense is so bad. And, and you want to give it a slight pass because they traded Victor Lodipo and got back a guy that can't play right now. I'm so happy that Karis LeVert um, got traded because if he didn't, it, I don't know what happens, you know what I'm saying? Him getting traded saved his life, but he's not on the court. TJ Warren is not on the court, and these are guys that will be offensive creators. Malcolm Brogdon, as good as he is, I don't know if I see him really as a point guard. I think he's more of an off guard, and I think that's where he, he strived the most Um for me personally, as, as a fan watching from an outsider looking at he strives the most as an off ball because there, there are times where, like, he, he is so good to getting at his spots and get into the paint where you would want him to be maybe a slightly better playmaker to kick out to the corners. You have Doug McDermott. You have Justin Halle who had another um, clutch couple shots in this game that, of course, didn't end up in the victory. You want him to be a little bit more of a playmaker. But at the end of the day, that maybe just not who he is, right? He, he's been put in a role right now due to injury and things like that where he has to do this type of things. Either way, them at 15 and 16 is a, is a bit weird. Sabo, Sabonis, though, get that all-star knot. Get that all-star knot. And I think Jason Tatum has moved up to the starting lineup in the all-star game. The other games, I didn't really get to. Um, Kawhi had a big one, it looks like. And then the Lakers game, I could not get myself to watch that one because I was so focused on Warriors versus Hornets. But Dennis Schroeder came back. You right, If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Um, I'll see y'all soon. Hey, hit up your favorite NBA player. Let them know I'm looking to talk to him for called game. Virtually, of course. We have all the setup. We're just trying to book more talent. We got a few people that I think are going to be super fun. We already spoiled one with Duncan Robinson when I was on his podcast. He'll be on an episode. 
Um, some of my NBA friends like Tyrese Halliburton said he'll come back because um, he was on the first official one or unofficial one. But there are so many players that I would love to talk to. Um, let them know I'm looking for them. All right. Appreciate y'all. Love you. Call game.